So in today's video, I wanted to go over how professional musicians are able to learn and keep songs in their head without having to refer to sheet music or tab, because a lot of the time with students, I find that they get really married to the idea of they need their tab or they need their sheet music to follow along without being able to keep the form in their head, and a lot of them find that this kind of hinders uh, their playing experience. So I wanted to go through the process of how I would go about learning a song and how I keep it in my head and break down its sections so that I can follow the structure of the song without needing any reference in front of me. So for this demo, I'm going to be using Benson Boone's song, uh, Beautiful Things. Unfortunately, due to the nature of YouTube copyright rules, I'm not going to be able to actually play you the actual track, um, but I've got it broken down and there'll be a wonderful little diagram popping up here kind of showing you how I'm going about and thinking about this process. But so, the song opens with this little guitar lick, or little guitar part that goes... There's a big bend on the third there of that F. But so what that main chunk is, is it's E flat, B flat, and F. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break that down into, some people refer to this as the Nashville number system. I don't like thinking about it like that. I just think about it as thinking of harmony and Roman numerals or in their uh, key or their chord function. So this chord progression, if you have three chords, you can tend to fit them into whatever key the song may be in. And for us, in this instance, that key is the key of B flat. So this intro chord progression is four. E flat is the fourth in the key of B flat. Then B flat is my one, and then F is my fifth. And so I'm gonna think, okay, this verse and this intro part is built largely on four, one, five as the chord progression. Uh, and as that goes on, that is, ends up being this kind of second part of a larger chunk that makes up the verse. So when the lyrics come in, this is the sequence that happens. It goes E flat, B flat, F to G minor, which is the sixth chord in B flat. And then it goes again. So I'm going to group that whole chunk. So E flat, B flat, F, G minor. E flat, B flat, F. That's the chunk that I'm keeping in my head as the verse. And in this song, that happens twice once the lyrics come in and we're in the verse. And if you aren't familiar with these numbers that I'm throwing out and assigning to chords, or you're wondering, well, wait, why is E flat the four chord? I do have a video on my channel called Why Are Chords in Certain Keys? Or something along that. I'm just paraphrasing the title. But you can check that out to fill in some of this knowledge. But so once I have that chunk isolated as that's the verse, I can kind of, my brain is able to consolidate all of these moves into one. So for the verse of this song, I would go. Then it happens again. That's my whole chunk. Then this happens again. So the first time going through these, I go up to that G minor. And then every second time, I just end on that F and it holds for twice as long. Then I have this marked in my, my part here as verse B, where there's a little bit of a different chunk, um, where it's basically the same thing, but it's slight variations on how this goes um, before we get into the kind of pre-chorus, where it goes. And then we get this. Or F, F sharp diminished. Minor, and that's just a passing chord to add a little bit of weight to it. So in action, we get this. Then this bit ends the same. And then the second time through this kind of verse B, we get a slightly different twist where we do the normal. And then it goes G minor, F. Uh, sorry. So that was G minor, F, E flat, and then it stays on E flat, and then it goes to F minor, or sorry, F major, before we go to the chorus. And that, or sorry, the pre-chorus. So that's kind of my whole verse chunk, where I'm basically thinking about it as there's this first part, which I'm calling the verse. So this is the verse part and I played a dominant chord there, but then when verse B happens, it's just a slightly more elaborated version of the same thing, 
And again, when there's these slight variations, it's always best to use your ear and knowledge of the song to, like, sometimes I use lyrics in my head as the cue. So, um, in here it says, no man, uh, what is it? For the girl he sent my way, or whatever it is, there's no man who's as terrified as the one who stands to lose you, is kind of the lyric bit here. Then we go into the pre-chorus, and now we're just playing power chords, but it's basically the same progression when it's like, please don't, I want you, I need you, oh God, and we do this twice, where so it's E flat, B flat, and then it goes down to G, F, and then G minor, so this is the same, but now we're just chugging power chords, and then the very last time it's... So even this pre-chorus is pretty much the same as the verse. So I've built this structure, I know that those are my chords and that's kind of how I'm cycling through them. But then anyways, we go through that pre-chorus, when we get to the chorus, it's very very similar, it's the same four chords but they're in a slightly different order where here it's B flat, B flat, G, F, or four, one, six minor. And then that carries on through the whole chorus. And then we've pretty much figured out the whole song. The only real difference now is that this is going to go to the verse is, um, so what is it? So I called this verse C because the second verse is slightly different than the, the previous ones. So this is the same. Then the second time we get which again we just get that passing F sharp going up to the G minor. So again this whole verse is 4 1 5 6 4 1 5 4 1 5 passing to 6 and then 4 1 5 and then we ride the chorus out and we do that. But this kind of simple process of just figuring out what the parts are of the song and again I'll, I'll zoom out here so you can see this whole kind of layout on this diagram. I call this practice making a song map. And when you're first kind of getting into this and consolidating your information into chords like this and into songs, it's really helpful to actually write them out. But the more and more you do it, you'll actually be able to retain this information in your head. And you'll also start to become aware of a lot of patterns that songs go through. Like often with my students when I'm transcribing something, I predict what's going to happen to them. I'll joke and I'll say, okay, now we're going to go to the bridge and then a double chorus and then fade out. And then eight times out of ten, that's what actually happens. So this is just a way of kind of, it works all of your musical brain and that it works your musical memorization. It works your theory when you convert these chords into these numbers where you go, okay, the, the, the verse is just four, one, five, or or whatever you decide, or whatever the song tells you it is. Um, and going through that will really help you get off the page and actually know some of these songs. And again, like anything, the more and more you do this, the easier and easier it gets. So I hope you found that useful because I certainly have, especially when one of the bands I played in had to learn four hours of cover music to have completely off book. We're doing this kind of song mapping exercise and knowing what these chord progressions were and what key they were in was a crucial part of me being able to retain all of that information and use it in real time. But hope you found this useful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. If you want to take a guitar lesson with me, there's a link to contact me down in the description below. I'd love to work with you on whatever you're working on on the guitar. In the description as well, there's links to my Patreon, there's links to buy my video course on triads or my book on scales. And until I see you next time, I'll wish you a wonderful day and I hope you have some fun playing the guitar.